Hey, American Literature friends. This is the second half of the beginning of the course, introduction to the course video. In this video, I'm gonna go over the assignments for the course, the grades, try to cover everything I can. Again, I'm sure I'll forget something or that you'll have a question that I fail to answer or forget to answer. If that's the case, please be in touch with me over email um, and I'll, I'll get you whatever answer you need or get you whatever help I can give you. I'm happy to help you or answer anything that I forget or anything that comes up for you. As you can see on the syllabus here, the grade breakdown for this course, 50% of the course is five response papers. All of those response papers will be around between 500 and 600 words. I will show you how you will get those and access those in just a second. Then there will be a research paper, which is 10% of the course. Again, in just a second, we'll scroll down to that too. All of that's available to you in D2L. The only thing that's not immediately available to you right now is the three exams. There's an exam on June 22nd, an exam on, the second exam for this course is July 1st, and then the final exam for this class is July 29th. That's all in the reading and assignment schedule right down here. Uh, the participation in in-class assignments, uh, that I'm mainly going to pull that from your responses and interactions when we have Zoom class meetings, um, and those will begin on June 15th, as you can see right here. As I said in the other video, we won't have a Zoom class meeting that first week of class, June 8th and June 10th, because I'll be in the hospital with my wife giving birth, uh, so we will start that almost certainly on June 15th unless somebody has a need for it. it unless I get home from the hospital on Thursday or Friday and somebody has an immediate need to get some questions answered or something like that uh, if not if that's not the case we'll jump into that on June 15th my plan right now is to start our zoom sessions by going over the yellow wallpaper the yellow wallpaper the Charlotte Perkins Gilman story and to spend let our first zoom session be a short discussion of that story and then answering any questions that you all have after you've gotten settled into the course and gotten into it uh, that first week of June 8th and June 10th. So let me go back, pull back into D2L and show you the assignments for the course. If you notice, the first thing uh, under each writer and the first writer for the semester is Ambrose Bierce is a response topic. Each of those response topics uh, gives you a prompt if you want to write this paper. In the case of an occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge, it says, Bierce uses realistic details, limited third-person narration, and a tense shift to lead the reader to the twist ending. Explain how and where in the story these details and devices work, as well as how effective they are. And then it says, text from June 8th, response due June 10th before 5 p.m., 550 words. Every text that we're gonna cover this semester beginning with Ambrose Bierce and Kate Chopin and Jack London and ending with Billy Collins and Jupa Lahiri and Sharon Olds, who are the last three writers we will read at the end of June, has a response topic with it. That means that if you scroll through all of the writers, there's usually two each day, um, there are, and in fact, I'll pull the syllabus up and count right now for you, if we can get this back up here, here we go. There are, there will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. There should be roughly twenty-four choices for you to pick five response papers out of. You can pick any five you want. You can pick the first five and be done with it for the whole semester. You can pick the last five and, and put off everything till the end. I would advise against that. Often students who do that have unpleasant surprises of one kind or another. They're unhappy with the grade they get and, but, and then they're stuck with the last five choices so there's no choice in it. But you can pick any five. You can do one on June 24th, on June 24th, and one on July 1st, and one on July 8th, and one on July 13th, and one on July 15th, and then you're done. You can pick any five that you want, um, but each of those is 10% of your final grade. Um, you can also, you, there's also some leeway with that too, because you can do six, and I will drop your lowest grade. 
Uh, so if you turn in six response papers over the course of the semester, I will drop your lowest grade and count your high as five. Or, and I want to be clear about this, or not and. You can't do both of the things I'm about to say, but you can pick one or the other. Or you can revise, if you get a paper, you get a response paper back from me, you're unhappy with the grade, you can revise it and turn it back in for a higher grade. So you can, you've got your five papers, you can turn in six and I'll drop the lowest grade, or you can just keep your five but revise one of your five and turn it back in to me for a higher grade. Uh, either, either one of those is fine, um, but those five response papers, all of which are around 550 words a piece, will make up 50% of your grade. Then if we jump back here to the coursework and assignments, there's a research paper. It is due right here on July 22nd. Uh, all of the information for that research paper is in D2L under the heading that says research paper guidelines and information and right there you will see uh, there is a link to research paper guidelines and instructions uh, there is a sample student research paper to give you an idea of what an A paper looks like um, and then there is an online research and documentation guide and a short video going through how I'll grade the paper, what I'll be grading for, those kinds of things. I think that video is 10 or 15 minutes, but it goes over the basics. It gives you a rubric of what I'll be grading for, what I'll be looking for, and the basic format and structure of the paper. The last piece of the assignments is the exams. Let's get back to those. You can see those right here. There's three exams. They're 10% apiece to get us to 30% of the grade. Uh, the first, all of the exams will be short answer, um, and I will give you something like a dozen questions, and you'll pick eight to answer. Um, all of those questions and answers will deal with that it will be some mix of the terminology that we're going to cover as we go through the semester and some basic response paper type questions but shorter that you'll be able to answer and when I say short answer what I mean is each each question should take you three four five six seven sentences to answer it, you'll need to give a short explanation um, that's three four five six seven sentences for each of your eight answers for each exam uh, those exams, as I said, the first, they roughly match up with the three different books. If you've got the books for this course, there is a realism first book exam that will happen on June 22nd. There is a second exam which covers modernism, the second book, on July 1st. And then there is a final exam that covers the yellow book, the third book, postmodernism, that will happen on uh, July 29th. The way that we will do those exams, like I said, that's the only thing that's not immediately on the first day available to you in D2L. Um, on those days, sometime around 10 a.m., I will post the exam, and it will be due sometime at 1 or 2 o'clock. You'll have two or three hours to work on the exam. It should not take you that long. The exams are designed to be taken in class in like 75 or 90 minutes. So they will be posted. You will, uh, on those days, you will jump in D2L, um, you will answer your exam, you'll save it as a Word document and email it to me before one or two o'clock. Um, that should cover all of the assignments. That, that covers everything we're gonna do this semester other than our Zoom sessions that you'll, that, in which I'll give you credit for questions, participation, those kinds of things. Um, that really covers all of the assignments that we're going to do. The one other thing, and I, and I went over academic and honesty and plagiarism in the uh, first video that's just an introduction to the course, just be careful, especially in these response papers, part of what I'm grading for is your ability to form a thesis, form a thought, and form an argument about something that we're reading and then support and develop that thought, that thesis, with specific examples from the text. Uh, if there is one rule or guideline that I can emphasize to you that 
for me makes good papers good and bad papers bad. Uh, what I will be grading for, whether it's the response papers or the research paper, is specificity. There is a simple formula that I will be grading for, especially with the response papers, which is that there is a thesis in the first paragraph. And what I mean by thesis, and what all college professors in my experience mean by thesis, is not a topic, not a here's what this paper is about, but some kind of statement that is in the first paragraph that tells me directly and specifically what point the paper is going to prove, what the paper will show, prove, or demonstrate. It's almost like a hypothesis if you're in science lab or science class where you're saying, here's what this experiment will show, prove, or demonstrate. What I'm looking for, the very first thing that I'm looking for, and often when I'm reading a paper and I leave the first paragraph and I don't get this, I don't have this, I know it's not, it can't be a good paper because it has nothing to prove. And so the first thing that I, the first piece that I'll be grading for is that I leave the first paragraph and you have clearly stated what your paper will show, prove, or demonstrate. Uh, the second part of that formula is after you've got the thesis, the body of the paper should be devoted to specific examples from the story that support and develop and prove your thesis. So there is this thesis, and then here's what I'm going to prove, and then here's the body of the paper where I give specific examples from the paper, from the story or the poems or whatever we've read. Here's where I give specific detailed examples that prove my thesis, that develop and show and prove and demonstrate my thesis. The opposite of good writing, the opposite of how to write for this class and in general in my experience is vague abstract language. Every sentence that you write that is specific and detailed and focused about whatever we are reading, whether it's an occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge or the yellow wallpaper or Rose for Emily, that's good. Every sentence that you write in any paper that is vague in general and that is like, in the history, since the beginning of time there have been wars or people have always had flashbacks to different incidents. That's so vague in general, it doesn't mean, mean anything. You're wasting your time writing it. You're wasting my time reading it. Um, don't write in those vague abstractions. Uh, no matter which five prompts you pick, they will ask you to write about the story. Every sentence that you write that is specifically focused on the story is good. Every sentence you write that is vague and abstract and sounds like a Hallmark card is bad. Bad, bad, bad. Um, that is my most basic piece of guidance I can give you for what I will be grading for and what makes a good paper good and a not good paper not good. If you have questions about that, uh, please be in touch with me. And like I said, there's a sample research paper in there that shows you that kind of good focused writing. That's that same focus, detail, specificity is also true even for your short answer answers on each, each of the three exams. So again, just to summarize, there's five response papers. You've got 20 something choices to pick your five from, so you shouldn't have any problem um, because that's at least four times as many as you'll need. Um, you just pick whichever five. Uh, often students say, well, how will I know which five to pick? My answer to that is usually, if we read a story and you read the story and especially watch the course video for it or we talk it through it on Zoom and you feel like you clearly understand it, you clearly comprehend it, you've got a good grasp of what happened in that story, sit down and write that response paper. That's my best advice for you. In my experience, the students who do the best and have the best success with their response papers, the common thing that they all say is, we read this and I understood it clearly. I, I very clearly understood the characters and the settings and those kinds of things. Or after we talked through it in class, I absolutely understood this. Okay, write that paper. That, that's the sign that you should write that paper. The, um, the research paper, uh, there's a specific guide going over it and there's specific guidelines and information. And we can, by the time we get to the research paper in mid-July, we'll have had an opportunity on Zoom to just dig into it and go through it. So that's, I'm not gonna worry about that right now. And then the participation, that'll come in bits and pieces as we work through the semester. So don't worry about that either. Um, if you have any questions or any concerns, please don't hesitate to be in touch with me via email and I will answer them and address them as fully and completely as I can. Um, otherwise, I hope this video is useful to you. 
um, and I'm looking forward to reading your work, hearing your thoughts, um, and going through all of this literature with you of the past 150, 160 years or so. I'm looking forward to having an exciting summer with you guys. Um, this is almost like a big summer reading program, like we're all in fourth grade together having summer reading together. Uh, so I hope you're as excited as I am about that. And again, if you've got questions, be in touch with me and I'll try to answer them. Thanks a lot, guys.